I have another project for you today. This was a tree that I rescued from a customer's collection. He had a mishap recently. Apparently, in his garden, one of the branches from a large tree fell on top of the bonsai and broke the top. So he told me. I don't know whether the story is true or not, but this is what he told me happened to this white pine, this Japanese five-needle pine. I'm not sure if it was from our nursery originally, but uh, whatever it is, the rest of the tree seems to be growing well. And he was going to not throw it away. He wanted to restyle it, but he didn't have a clue as to what to do. And in fact, it is quite a difficult tree. And I thought I'd show you this tree more to describe the thought process that goes through in deciding what to do with this tree. So this is what we call a classic problem tree. The problem is that it's got no top and it's got two branches. It's like a wild man waving his arms. Let's look at it from different sides. So here you have the tree. So what can we do with this? So whenever I'm presented with a problem like this, I've got to think, what are the options? So the first thing I do is to consider what can be rescued or retrieved from this, I wouldn't say a mess, but obviously a lost case. It's not entirely lost because it's got quite a lot of angular lines. So that straight away makes it interesting. We can use this side and that side, but we decide which we will finally settle on. Also, I need to decide on the front or the back of the tree from quite early on. It is obviously a very old tree. Look at it. It's got really nice gnarled old bark. Looking at it, this side is nice. But when I turn it to this side, there is this ugly root here, and I don't want to cut that. It is ugly, but it will be seen. So if you cut it, I think I may be removing too much root, so that could be dangerous. And I see that he has repotted it, but it's not really established in the pot, so the roots haven't filled the edges. But the roots are quite healthy. There are some new roots here. A bit too damp for my liking. Some of these people repot the trees themselves and they don't use the ideal compost. So this compost is much too wet to my liking, but I will put it in better compost for him. So this is what the state of the tree is like. So I might as well take it out of the pot since it's not really meshed into the pot itself. There you are, see, the roots are not meshed in the pot. This is a very nice pot, but we're not going to use it. So, let's put the pot on the turntable. So, straight away I have decided that this is not going to be a nice front. This would be a better front. Because there's the angle this way, it's better viewing it from here. This is not going to be much use as a front. Not really. What about the angle? Let's tilt it in different angles and see what the options are. So to tilt it, I can either tilt it by doing this. So this could be a possible solution, if I make it a cascade with a top there and this branch coming down, that's one possibility. So if you can imagine this is the top and this is going to be the cascade part, that is a possibility. Or even just chopping it like this, that cascading that way is a possibility. So I've always said that every problem has more than one solution. 
So that is one solution. Let me tilt it the other way and see what comes out by tilting it this way. Okay, if I tilt it this way, this could be interesting because that line goes there, this line comes back up and I can take it back on itself like this. And that could become quite a nice literati tree and then get rid of this. So, so the choice is between having a cascade, which I showed earlier, or, or a literati, but with the literati I will probably have to get rid of this one, not use that side. So let's hide that and see what happens. So this is going to be the tree like this, which looks quite nice. Now you don't see that distracting part comes back on itself, so I'm trying to make it more compact because the two waving arms like this doesn't look anything. So for my money I would prefer this solution rather than the other solution of the cascade tree. Although once having decided that, I'm sure some of you viewers will always scold me and say that, oh, you should have done something else. You should have made it a cascade with a top like this and a cascade coming down that way. But I don't think it looks so nice this way. So I will decide to do it the other way. And because this owner trust me for my judgment, I will do what I feel is best in my view. So this is going to come off. And when I decide on taking something off, I have no choice now. I can't go back. I've taken it off. Now we've got to decide whether we want to make gin with that or not. You can make a short gin, but I don't think... A lot of people use driftwood and gins for the sake of using gins, or they like to carve. I don't like that approach, you know. Uh, doing gins and driftwood just for the sake of doing it, or carving just for the sake of carving, is really not the right approach. So, to my mind, that would be wrong. Again, there's a con conflicting line. See, the line is naturally this way. Having something going that way is distracting. It breaks the line of this side. So, I still think I should get rid of it completely. However tempting it is to make a gin with it. Just with that, it looks better. So, I can try making driftwood, but I don't think it would look right. I will keep it for a while. I don't want to discard it completely and see what happens. And the rest now is wiring. So let's wire the tree and see what happens. So let's wire this and uh, create something out of this. I'm immediately faced with a problem of how to anchor the wire. I'm using four millimeter Japanese wire. When I talk about the two branch principle, you always link one branch with another. But in this instance, if I want to wire this branch, there isn't a counterbalancing branch to wire it against. So, let me see what I can improvise. Mm -hmm. 
I think I should split the trunk because I'm doing quite a drastic bend. So I'm going to bring my branch splitter. The Japanese call it a trunk cracker. I think the translation from Japanese is not quite what we would like in English. But they call it the trunk cracker, but it is what we call a branch splitter. So I've got to split the branch to make it easier to bend. And as I've said before in some of my earlier YouTube videos, the branch splitter makes the branch into two thinner slivers, which makes it easier to bend because if it's just one thick piece, it's more difficult than two thin pieces. So that's the theory behind using the branch splitter. And the bend is going to take place here, so this is the point where we want the tree to bend. I'm not wrapping it with raffia. Some people use raffia. I'm not that keen on using raffia, mainly because I think it's not all that necessary. Now I said I didn't know what to do with anchoring the other end of the wire, but what I might do is try and double the wire and take it back on itself. A rather unconventional way of wiring. Now let me see how I can do a bit of jiggery-pokery. Yes, not too much jiggery-pokery. I've got to double straight away by doing this. So. I've anchored to the same branch, but I'm still using the two branch principle in effect. You notice I'm using this low turntable because this is the right height for me. I use different heights of turntable to suit the situation on hand. So I've got a double piece of wire there, so it should make the thing much easier to bend. When I bend very tricky old branches like this, I try not to just do point load like this with fingers like that. I grip it in the palms of my hand, so should it break, I can control it and makes it less likely to break. As with many of my so-called designs, I don't try and plan too much by drawing out a sketch of what I want the tree to turn out to be. Because I've always felt that doing that is very inhibiting. It doesn't give you the freedom of just creating as you go along. So, I'm just going to keep wiring and then see what happens. Some people ask, when is the best time to do the wiring? Is there an optimum time? Uh, I think you can wire almost any time. Although if you wire in the growing season, that means during spring and summer, the branch is set quicker because the action is taking place in the stems and in the cells of the branches. 
But if you do it in the winter and protect it, the tree should be okay. We're lucky because we have these extensive greenhouses, so whatever work I do won't hurt the tree too much because I have the protection that I can provide. Wiring is a discipline that the more you do, the better you become. It's one of those unavoidable chores, but it has to be done. You notice I'm still going back to see if there is a case for making this the front because if this turns out to be a better front I will have to get rid of that root but so far I'm still using this side and using this as the full face. I'm trying different positions to see what is the best outcome or design for the tree. I'm taking it back on itself. Looking at it from this side is quite different from looking at it from the other side. So what I had originally thought could have been the front, do you remember me telling you that we were considering this to be the front? If I look at a tree like this and look at the tree like this, I'm beginning to think that this might be a better front for the tree. So this is where you got to keep an open mind. So this could be a possible solution. I think this makes it quite nice and compact. So this turned out to be the front. To my liking, this is a better front than the other one. So although I started off looking at it from this side, I prefer the other side.
And what do I do with this? I can carve it a little bit. I won't rush to do it. This is quite a lump over here. Let me see if I can do a bit of carving. When I use carving tools, I always use a mask, face mask. And I use my gloves. This is not a very dangerous implement. It's not a chainsaw. So it's just a Makita die grinder with a chainsaw type blade. Okay, we will find a drum pot and put it in and see what happens. So we've got so far, I now can put it in a, another pot because as I mentioned to you, the soil is not ideal. The soil in fact looks very, very poor. It's very heavy soil with very fine sand. I don't want to disturb the roots too much. He's obviously put it in a much bigger pot, which is always the wrong thing to do. You only put it in the next size pot up from the existing pot. Because if you put it in too big a pot, the roots will not be able to reach the edges. So looking at the tree, if we come close, you will see that some of these roots have in fact rotted. These roots have got no growth in it. See, there is no growth on there. This even is a bit dead. See, that also is not very good. So this poor tree would have gradually gone downhill, in my view. Usually trees which are healthy fill the pot completely, which this tree has not done. So these roots are completely dead. So I can safely cut it out. So you scratch the surface or so rotten roots. So he had done a bad repotting job. There's nothing there. Now that is live. That is dead. Okay, so the root ball is in fact quite small. See, look at it. If you look at it, the roots haven't really meshed at all, so it's not in good condition. So to put it in its final pot may not be the best thing to do. So although I brought a selection of mica pots, this would be the right size of pot. It needs to go in that angle mounted high. So this would be the right size of pot. I could put it in that. It would look right. Too big a pot wouldn't look right. So 
I will proceed to put it in this pot. I'll take you to the potting bench and I'll show you what soil mix I mix it in. So I brought my potting tray. Just another little tip for those of you who like to see all the little tricks I use. This is a cement mixing tray. You can buy these in builders merchants. I don't know whether in other countries you can get it, but here in the UK, these are sold for about nine or 10 pounds for mixing cement. And I've used this for the last 30 years to mix my soil. So this is our standard mix for many of our trees. And you can see, I don't use 100% Akadama. I use 30% Akadama and about 20% of pumice and Japanese grit and then there is sphagnum moss peat and bark in it. So this is a very good mix to use even for the pine. I wouldn't use entirely akadama or entirely grit. It could cause a problem. And uh, I will just do a very quick uh, repot because as I say this is only to help the tree to recover. So I'm not too worried about its final pot and final position. I'll just bring some mesh. I'm not going to shake all the soil off. I'm just going to slightly loosen the old soil. It's very, very pot bound. When the tree is growing strong again, I might do a proper repot. This tree will be staying here maybe a few months, certainly, until it recovers. You can see the original shape of the pot was a rectangular pot like that. And he put it in a pot about two, three times bigger than it ought to be. So no wonder the roots haven't meshed properly. So this was the original size of the pot. See, look at that rect rectangular pot, that shape. But the rest of the roots are all right. But because I'm going to put it at a slight angle, I'm going to prop it up like this. So this is really just a temporary measure. But what I need to make sure is that I'm going to put a lot of sphagnum moss ensure that the roots grow well. So as you know sphagnum moss is the answer for a lot of trees that are not very healthy. So I'm going to let the sphagnum moss touch the roots. I spend a fortune on sphagnum moss but it pays dividends. And then the rest of it is going to be filled with soil. I'm going to prop it up like this. That's the highest I can make it stand up. Our video producer Bodhi, who helps with all these video films, just pointed out that this root looks quite nice. So having told me that, I always like to respect other people's views. And I will keep it. I won't cut it off. It'll be also better for the tree. I'm sure a lot of you will agree with her. I think in life one has to learn that you can't always be right. 
I think if you assume that you're the only person who has the right opinion or the right view, it's not just arrogant, but you don't learn. So this is how the tree has turned out. And rather than move the tree too far away, I'll use this as a turntable. Let me find, I have a little round turntable. Certainly become lighter from what it was originally. So this is how I have changed the tree. And I think it looks nice from this side. Just a bit of carving I did there. It leans too much away from that side. And if I brought it back on itself, it would work in the future, but it would take time. But at the moment, I think this side looks quite nice. It goes back on itself and then comes forward again. So it's got a lot of angular movement in all sorts of different directions. So I've made this more compact. So the secret of this transformation was bringing the two long branches into a compact form. So I had to get rid of one and this becomes a very nice, nice dumpy literati I call it. And this, once it forms nice pads, should turn out to be quite a nice tree. So I hope I've rescued a lost cause and made it more visually pleasing. So I hope you've enjoyed this one.